阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good evening, everyone. Uh, today we'll continue with Clause Forty, Part Eight. So, just for the interest of those who、uh, weren't here last week, we were talking about the new part, blatantly committing evil deeds. Chinese call Xian Heng Zhi Er. Literal translation is,、um, you know. Obviously, without care of you know sense of shame of others committing unwholesome deeds, deeds that harm people, harm others, harm harming other peoples, in all fact, in all ways, you know, physically, mentally, property, their property, their lives, and stuff like that. So damaging their property, their lives,、uh, their career, everything around their lives. So those are、um, this one is especially focused on. Deeds that are, you know, in your face, literally, just do it without、uh, any、um, intention to cover it up. So straight up doing it, straight up committing the trespassing or crime. So last week we talked about the chapter、uh, clause thirty-eight,、um, and it's all it, it's it's、uh, as you can read from the、um, translation. They they talk about、um, you know bring, bankrupting people's house. Still using deceitful means to steal, steal people's、um, wealth, and、uh, this one can you know extrapolate or you know you can expand it to to the bigger scale or you can put it in the minuscule day to day、uh, situations.、Um, people who commit these uh, deeds, uh, they have、um, how to say, not thought of the importance of cause and effect when they doing that. And the cause and effect is not obvious because it's not、uh, directly happening. It's very rare unless the deed is very strong. Sorry, guys. The deed is very strong, very how to say blatantly like like this one, very、uh, intense. Otherwise, cause and effect usually takes time. Therefore, people could not see the、um, consequences of committing these、uh, two deeds that we talked about last week. All right. The first one talks about、uh, making people bankrupt, making people. Uh, losing their livelihood or、uh, causing them, you know, through scamming, through、uh, deceitful ways,、uh, causing them to lose their wealth, to lose their livelihood that they depended on. So this alone is,、uh, it's how to say, it's quite、um, how to say, it's it's painful because sometimes it might、uh, cause them to, you know. Do something irrational, you know, like you know, maybe they lose all their savings and stuff, and they can't, they can't take it through, and they commit suicide, or、um, they, you know, they were forced to, you know, maybe work at a very young age, or vulnerable to darker as part of the society, you know, open up for those、uh, illegitimate、uh, pathway in life. Prostitutions and stuff like that. This might happen because when we push them out to the corner, drive them to the corner, where they lo lost their their home, their properties, the thing they rely on, you know, because of our scam and etc.、Um, sometimes people can't take it, and you know they do something、uh, desperate and you know, erratic. Sometimes they might even commit murder because、uh, at the heat of the moment, not premeditated, but you know. Feeling angry,、um, feeling、um, unsatisfied, or vengeance out of vengeance. So I'm, I might sound like I'm watching too much movie, but、um, you know there are there are many cases, and if we look into the、um, day to day news bulletin or police report, I'm pretty confident there are situation like that. You know, you scam people money, you cause them to lose their investments because of your、um, fraudulent 
behavior and they lose that money that they're supposed to use for their children's education funds or you know supposed to support universities uh tuition fees of their children's of or support the retirements now they dish out every savings and being destroyed uh being taken away by these fraudsters and you know they they either have to endure the families um blaming and you know sometimes the old people the elderly people are not aware of this you know tricks and they were being um scammed or being taken you know by their uh, by these fraudsters and now they you know under immense pressure uh the livelihood gone that they really rely on children's and sometimes you know the children's can't even support themselves properly and so this these are the series of events you know that, that might cause to many unfortunate outcomes um so you know doing this kind of thing just to get a wealth you know that is not yours obviously um it's terrible and you know people who can only see now without understanding the cause and effect will always think that if i cannot be caught say i escape to some countries that has no extradition with the the, the place i committed crime you know maybe go to some um, bahamas or uh, panama or some some area where the country cannot be yeah you cannot be um you know so you cannot be immediately held accountable because you committed a crime in a different country. Uh, you may escape maybe for the rest of this life, you know, enjoy the wealth that you squandered from other people. But rest assured, this um, debt must be paid. And the pain, the sufferings that one caused by you know bankrupting other people's house, family, uh, will be returned manifold. These are not doings of any person it's actions and reaction newton's law actions and reaction very straightforward simple to understand you know and it will multiply it won't just be straightforward so this is why we can see so much wars and you know as, as you can see currently in our world right now and all this unfortunate situation those are how to say indirectly directly caused by this kind of um acts you know, little bit by little bit. But I don't want to go too big. And let's go to day to day as well. Um, including this second clause, you know, you causing flight and commit arson. Obviously, normal people won't do that. Obviously, this part eight refers to people who blatantly commit crime in broad daylight or in front of everyone, thinking it, it as an uh, entertainment or, you know, artistic endeavor, uh, which is a very rich material for novels but in real life if people did that right and then causing the property damage the life damage um this one uh is uh i say there's always cost to be paid you know um if we look at the minuscule level right a person who burned the forest uh, who you know scouted we talked about that last week as well we the person who caused damage to the forest by their carelessness or intentional you know they're trying to clear the land they are lazy they use this kind of means to do it or they smoke in the middle of a dry season when in the bushlands and drop uh, secret buds without extinguishing it or don't smoke in the first place but they do that despite the warning causing the bushfire that we australian as an unfortunate situation of facing it i'm pretty sure the other part of the country has the same similar experience as well so at this point what i'm trying to get at is even something like bushfire you know those you know wildfire that, that burns a lot of vegetations it's, it's actually equivalent of you know committing war crimes in a sense because when you fight a war you destroy people's house habitat you know through the blazing fire of the bombs and stuff like that caused by the bomb same goes for this bushfire you're burning thousands of trees and houses that are supposed to uh, be the habitat for other uh, sentient beings other animals uh, even you know some people human beings as well you know some tribes are still relying on this resource or um, some logging company uh, some other uh, people who use the forest as their source of uh, nourishment although it's very rare nowadays but uh, still 
you know, happens time to time. People might use the forest as a resource to find food. And because of this um, carelessness, you, 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 you know, commit arson or in, in, uh, against the forest and, or against the nature. Uh, causing flood is like building a dam and flooding the entire plains. They are supposed to be brimming with life. Now it becomes, you know, under the sea. You know, it becomes a, uh, it's soaked with water. Not just soaked, it's under the water. So you're basically destroying people's house and lives. Uh, even though they are sentient beings, it makes no less uh, importance uh, than, say, a war would do. You know, the kind of damage. And for what would one person commit this? Maybe for fun? That's even worse. For the sake of fun, some might be carelessness. This carelessness, is, no matter how unintentional, is still unforgivable because you're actually causing destruction of entirety, entire ecosystem. So the consequences need to be paid. doesn't matter if you're intentional or not. It's just heavier or lighter. Um, but what's worse is that when people blatantly do that because they want to get, you know, maybe a patch of land. You know, I bought this land, right? You know, I, I own this property arbitrarily and I I just going to clear the whole forest without care about the ecosystem. Uh, those kind of mindset as well. You know, a company bought a patch of land and, you know, usually you have to be rich and concentrated wealth in order to do this kind of thing. Otherwise, Normal day-to-day -day people won't be able to do too much harm like that. I know that bushfire might be caused by you know an individual or what, but if we talk about other factors like uh, deforestation, careless maintenance of the you know those kind of uh, forestry reserves, this is the same as well. Like you know, company that do not uh, take in consideration when it develops, right? Develop a, a, a site where it involves a forest. They do not do do they not do a proper care, you know, replantations or relocations, etc. And they, you know, cause um, damage the people's food resource or water source. This is part of the transgression as well. What's worse that is people might want to cut costs and try to get more money out of it. And so what they do is they might, you know, uh, instead of going through the pr more costly and lengthy but careful procedure of, you know, maybe uh, develop one by one, patch by patch, uh, and then relocate. It will still do damage, but minimizing it. Uh, some people just blatantly say, you know, burn the whole place with a blaze of fire so that you can immediately bulldoze the rest of the land and start your, you know, monocrop, you know, the plantations uh, to earn quick bucks. They had, this happens um, a lot, more than you thought. You know, um, I'm not going to name names, but uh, especially those big corporations that has ability to do that. Because normal people do not have that capacity. Uh, yeah, it has to be a group effort. So this is uh, one such situation where this, uh, this kind of um, negative um, deeds was committed because of small profits. You know, those profits that um, may be awesome right now maybe in 10 years, but it will, what do I say, it, the, the harm that it has caused in, in order to get this is way too much. It's, it's long lasting. Um, obviously, there are people with conscience and people with, you know, the, the, the willingness to change and change their practice because this might not necessarily be illegal. And obviously, over here, it, it says that uh, causing flood and commit arson. But uh, if, Say this is my land, and I just you know dispose of it. So legally, I'm not wrong, but morally, you're bankrupt or uh, irresponsible. You know, so does the flood, you know, dam. Maybe you buy a whole patch of land. You have a government project, uh, but you know, this is the conflict, right? Where the needs of the people, the human beings, and the um, you benefit one side at the expense of another. You know, you benefit this species at the expense of other species. Uh, we can't just one stone, I mean, how to say, we can't just one size fits all. We can't just like, you know, do this blanket white blaming. But we need to understand um, due care and diligence is very important. 
in, in dealing with this, you know, people with, when dealing with people's livelihood, properties, uh, if you're building a dam, you need to be taking consideration how much you want to fly in one go, you know, leave some time for them to move, stuff like that, or minimize the damage in closures. Obviously, you will still do the damage. You know, those karma will be shared by everyone who benefited from this, including us. Uh, and committing arson, in, in a sense, not just against the building, those are very obvious, illegal, but legal means of, you know, burning things, disposing things as well. You know, you need to think about what impact is. So this way, is the current practice in a corporate world in the, you know, is they, they try and update to that level. Not saying that it's adequate, but they're trying to, you know, com uh, uh, commit more resources into thinking about uh, what kind of environmental impact. You know, the government might even put some policies uh, saying that the impact assessment on uh, on this patch of uh, land, if you're dealing with geothermal energy, stuff like that, you know, you will have to pollute the resources. So I'm not going too much in technical things, but what I'm trying to bring out is those real life situation where. You know, when you do things, when you're trying to uh, develop things, you un inevitably will cost some sort of harm or some sort of um, uh, damage because you need to clear lands, you need to open up stuff, and this is inevitable as, as people need to grow and expand. But it cannot be done in such a careless way. And obviously in this case, I'm pretty sure it's not like that. It's, it's like, you know, maybe some company just blatantly, maybe in some places where there are less jurisdiction, less strict laws, and less vigilance from the government, from the people. Maybe the people, but they're powerless. And, you know, they want, they want to develop, they want to extract the resources. So they just don't care, you know. They hire some mercenaries or they cause, um, you know, they cause harm to the local communities. You know, maybe, you know, just blatantly uh, burn the whole village. Oh, sorry, just burn the whole village. Burn, uh, burn the whole cro uh, forest crops that these um, other people is relying on, you know, to survive. Maybe in a more uh, less uh, more, I would say, less urbanized part of the world, you know, where they're still relying on the primary uh, resources like you know farming, agriculture, and relying on the forest, you know, foraging, hunting. There's still people like that. You know, just because we're all living in a city doesn't mean the rest of the world is. If everyone is living in a city, that it becomes a dystopia, to be honest. Um, but back to the point, right? This happens. It's just we we can't see it easily. Um, and so that's why we need to have cause and effect into a part of a human psyche if we want to develop to be a better civilization or better person. Because if we do not have a understanding of cause and effect, no matter how well, how brilliant our invention, you know, how wonderful our, you know, innovations, you know, artistic-wise, technology-wise, etc., it will only lead to um, a very painful ending. It might take thousands of years, but it will, it will get worse and worse because people lacking awareness of, you know, what they did will impact people, things around them. Obviously, I'm, I'm pretty sure we do aware of that, you know. You don't have to wait till next life to see it, to see the earth is, is in harm, uh, you know, global warming, etc. Or you don't have to wait for next life to see, you know, your actions and speech harms your family or children. You know, when they grow up, their attitude and stuff, part of it or big part of it will be the product, product of your action. So those are the consequences you can catch, you can see, you can touch. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> you don't have to wait for next life to see, uh, you know, the um, effect of, you know, uh, endless, uh, how do they, conflicts, you know, the hatreds uh, that, you know, cause another round of conflict, you know, the past grievance that cause the current wars that we are witnessing. You know, the Ukraine Russian war, those are past grievances not solved, past ambition not, uh, how to say, properly diverted. So those are grievances, they are not resolved. 
So what I'm trying to say is karma is not something you need to wait till next life to see. That's too far. Not saying that you shouldn't understand it. You should, and you should properly be, be if you really want to get uh, the the most out of this kind of session and get the most out of your life. You know, otherwise it's just useless. You know, like if if your life is just only one life and that's it. Afterwards, it's not reasonable because you know your body may go away. You at I'm a bit, I'm stretching a little bit far here, but what I'm trying to say is the whole concept of cause and effect is just to tell us um, right now is the right now is the time to change. Right now, no matter how small the effort it, you could do, is the moment of change. Because you start putting in the efforts in diverting yourself away from this kind of harmful deeds. You know, these things takes time to get to that level. You don't immediately go and burn people. Or committing, uh, f uh, uh, opening up, flooding people. You don't do that suddenly. Those things have, you know, you don't just go into people's house say, "I want to bankrupt you," or you know, "I want to cause some, uh, you know, extramarital affairs and uh, break up the marriage and family." People don't do that immediately. They do that because they're not aware, or they are. They don't have enough uh, safeguard in their heart that tells them how terrible if compared to the pleasure of doing it. You know, the, the cost is too much to bear. It's just we can't see it immediately. If we can see, if everyone can see what Bodhisattva Siddhigabha, Dijang, has said in his sutra, no one would dare to commit an evil. It's just for pure calculative reason. You do not want to burn yourself. Right? Just even you are not a very moral or very upright person, you understand this, like this is stupid. I'm talking about the basic of the basics, you know, not even like Tizukui level, underneath Tizukui level, like literally, you don't care about anyone, you only care about yourself. Then let me tell you, if you really want to take, uh, maximize your own profit, you need to start by, you know, stop, you have to stop harm, um, the acts that will harm other people. The worst thing is you're not aware the action you did is harming other people. And then this thing becomes a habit, becomes a norm, and now escalate into blatantly committing evil deeds because it's okay, you know, you, you get an okay pass from other people, from the society, or they, they are not uh, putting strong emphasis on it. It becomes a, it's fine, I can just do it. So if I move on to the chapter today, uh, to the talk today, this is exactly what we're trying to get at, you know, sabotage institution overturn existing standards, custom and procedures thereby causing uncertainty and disorder. That's that's a very big, big, big topic we can talk about just today and next week too. First, we read Chinese. When luan gui mo yi bai ren gong. When luan gui mo, when luan is that action. When luan means uh, make it confusing, make it um, uncertain, mess things up, make it very um, say chaotic. Gui Mo in uh, modern terms can be systems, can be institutions, can be a, a, a sort of system put in place so that people can have a peace of mind, right? So that they don't have to carry arms every day, or that they have to like you know um, worry about them being uh, uh, how to say being robbed, blind. You know, those are how to say. Those are systems that set in place so that people can have a relative peaceful uh, assistant with each other. Right? Obviously, the best system is pure land system where everyone can control themselves and able to hold five precepts. But I'm talking about utopia in the perspective of our current world right now. All right? Hence, we, that's why we want, we want to pure land. Because they, are, they, they don't need to have governments and system and institutions. You know, they only have a teacher who is a Buddha, who is fully enlightened, that he don't say you should do this, should not do this, you already know. What you need to do is just to follow his steps and showing you and then see what he sees, that's it. Because everyone has five precepts in the very least and they are able to cultivate meritorious deeds. Uh, you know, whatever they do will not harm any beings. The land they walk on is uh, like 
I'm talking about the opposite, right? Like why, why do we have systems, institutions? What's the opposite of it, right? Look at the Buddha's Pure Land. Or don't, look, don't look at Buddha's Pure Land. That's even, that's very uh, auspicious. But let's talk about the Buddha's time where they have Arahant, you know, the, or at least the third level. So, Sri Toh Han, Sri Toh Han, Anahan, Arahant. Arahant and one level below Arahant, you know, there are four levels in the original Buddhism. And when you reach the third level, you know, be right before the fourth level where you escape the six realms. Sorry for the technical terms. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, if you attain sage root in Buddhism, you're every, at least the third level, you know, everywhere you walk, this is a recording sutra, everywhere you walk, the patch of land, you will not touch the land. You will be like a few centimeters above, a bit lev basically levitating in a sense. And why? Because you will not harm any, sing any single beings. You not step on any insects, right? Everything you do is harmless. That's what I'm saying. Like all this, we're not focusing on the amazing abilities and all that. That's amazing. But the whole point is, why are they having these amazing abilities, recovering these amazing abilities? Because they have merits. Where's the merits? Where's the foundation of merits? With a peaceful, uh, compassionate, uh, loving heart. But on the in the very least. If you're not having invoking a very compassionate mindset, at least you do not want to harm anyone. That means compassionate foundation is found on no harm. You know, ahimsa. That's the concept of um, Buddhism. No harm. Ah means no. Himsa, harm, no harm. You know, you do not harm anyone. It's also shared by a, a lot of other, um, especially Hindu religions as well. Uh, it's contemporaries of the time. So it's a common thing, right? Ahimsa. Uh, so back to the point here, we need system, we need custom procedures because you know, in our current reality, we need to have, first thing, pr procedures, customs, you know, those, those things we can break it down a little bit. Let's not mash them up. Custom are mostly like, you know, the commonly accepted standards among group of people, uh, you know, like, uh, a group of people, like a school club, basically, they have a, they have the same interests, same practice, so they uh, follow the same kind of rules, and and you know it might not be formal, but um, it's widely accepted in the society. So those are customs, local customs, and from there, you know, it will solidify into a more concrete words, you know, where you should do this. If you don't do this, you will have the consequences. So they make it into codified things, those unwritten rules into written rules, basically. Because it maybe the society gets bigger, especially big societies. They need more formal. Otherwise, you can't support it. Uh, unless you have the ability to connect to each other's mind, telepathics. <laughs> we don't have that. So in our reality, we can't. So we need to have a rules and regulations so everyone can see and so everyone do not cross it. Cross it, everyone will see the consequences. In olden days, you know, from some of them are too cruel, all right? some of them are too much, but the whole point is trying to say instill sense of order. There are many ways to do it. People use fear, people use um, respect and fear, you know, all as well as as as, as uh, uh, fear of death, you know. You can write a whole essay on that. You can do a three-year study on that, which I did a little bit. But the whole point right now, what I'm trying to get at is there is a need for a system, institution, no matter what side you're standing on. There is um The whole point of having this is so people can have a peace of mind, like I said, and, and everyone can live together without fearing, you know. Some people might do this to me and you know, I need to defend myself and stuff like that. Right. If you have, still have to live in that society, that's unfortunate. Right. That's why we evolve slowly over the generations. You know, back then you still need to carry some weapons, sword. Of course, there are still some society doing that, but generally we don't need to. You know, you can choose to do that, but you don't need to, because we already what we call it civilized in a way that everyone can just sit down and talk. If I'm not happy with you, we go to the court. Or not happy with you, we, you know. That, that is also too serious. Like we can talk it out. If, if it's a very caring 
understanding society, it will also be um, able to sit down and 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 understand where is the source of frustration. So those are <clears throat> those are something we need as a you know species that lives in groups. We are not isolatory. You know, we can't we can't just live on your own. You can maybe few exceptions, but in seven billion or eight billion right now, people there's not much people that can do that. Hundred percent self sustain uh, sufficiency. Maybe one or two percent. So we're talking about the average everyday people, you and me. Know, who have to go on with your life and everyday stuff, family behind you as well. Even you're not married, you have your own parents, you have your own siblings. If you're unfortunate and you know being orphan and stuff like that, you still have friends and you know, your own group of people. Those are those are how to say. Those are important to you, and to take care of each other is the ultimate security. That's why we need the system to do it well. And even though the system is not perfect, hence we have this system of democracies and stuff like that, trying to you know, make sure that most people get the benefit, not, not alienated, not single out. So those things, especially we talk about laws, we talk about all this uh, constitution, etc., etc., trying to make sure everyone at least have a little sense of um, certainty so that they can plan ahead with their life. Don't have to worry about what happens next? So places like right now in Ukraine, in Russia, or in 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 some countries that are not as, let's say, peaceful, it's because you can see it. there's a lot of instigators popping up one side and another side, and unfortunately, this is not the way to live. You know, no matter how flamboyant we put ourselves in any camps of politic thoughts or theories, the core point is if the society is not stable. Only suffering remains. You know, World War Two is an example of that. And you have these current conflicts as well, and these decades. You know, since World War Two, we still have a little bit of conflicts. You know, like Vietnam War, right? A lot of our brothers and sisters, you know, Dharma brothers and sisters, they escaped Vietnam War, right? Who wants to leave their home if they have a choice? Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to say these are. These are not perfect things. No system is perfect. I'm not saying that we should allowing you know people who take advantage of the system in the wrong way run rampant, but we need to do it the right way, you know. But in this case, I'm pretty sure, like you see in the modern conflict right now, those instigators they have their own interests and uh, uh, mindset. They're trying to achieve their own aim, and you know, causing the chaos. Some even worse, hence fulfilling the part eight topic, blatantly committing evil deeds. They profited from this conflict. You know, they get monies out of it. They get, you know, selling arms and fires, trade. So one of the precepts in Buddhism, the eight, uh, the four noble paths, the eight, uh, Ba Zhen Tao, not the eight uh, rightful way. So, you know, oh, shit, sorry, I'm, I don't know how to say it. Ba Zhen Tao, how to Eight noble eightfold path. Yeah, sorry. A noble eightfold path. One of them is Zhen Ming, the right way of uh, earning your livelihood. And one of the noble eightfold path, right way of right livelihood, the Buddha do not encourage and do not basically say no to selling arms, firearms. All right. Right for on for the defense of your country stuff is one thing, but you selling it pro propagate it on day to day stuff, everyday people, um, when it's not needed, that's what he's against. And basically, this is against Buddhism because it's you basically encouraging people to have conflicts. And a proper society in in in, in peace and order, they can talk it out. But basically, they're able to sit down and and actually use words rather than. Violence, right? Or minimize it in the very least. So this is the point here, all right? Uh, in Buddhism as well, we have our own contract, all right? In 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 any human society, including Buddhism, right? We call it social contract. In Buddhism, we call it precepts. Qingui, like Auntie Yanzi, you have put on the 
uh, precepts, you know, the rules need to be followed by the uh, people who live in the temple. By, uh, this one is pioneered by um, Master Bai Zhang. So just for historical context, when Buddhism imported from India to China, Indian you know, customs and stuff obviously has influenced how Buddha's precepts was made. The one I'm talking about, those are spi in, in spirit of the law. Those are never changed no matter what universe you're going, let alone the earth. You can go to other universe, Milky Way. You still have to apply the five precepts and the ten. Those are universal. But there are specific customs like, you know, the monk carrying San Yi Ipo, you know, one bow, one bow of arms and three pieces of clothing when they go to China. Obviously, they can't survive because of negative negative 10 degrees. If they go to the northeast China, Dongbei, they will freeze to death unless they have gained a, a, a enlightenment. Buddha is now, Buddha is a very reasonable and compassionate person. He, of, of course, won't do that. But he was in India. But therefore, it's more Indian custom, which is tropical. So when when went to China, a lot of things have to change. Obviously, the society structure is a bit more different as well. Uh, asking for alms is different. Begging for alms is different. We don't do much begging alms in China. They mostly uh, revere the venerable as master, as teacher. And so inviting them to live in a vihara, in a temple, in a house. And temple in that time is considered an institution of education. Hence our Buddhist education initiative by Master Ching Kong. We need to go back to education. Now it's those revered monk was a teacher and he went invited by the emperor, which is a lay person representative into a temple, which is a school. Basically inviting a teacher to a school, give them the you know, penance for, I mean, give them the um, stip, uh, stipends for livings, you know, give them a patch of land they can farm, you know, without tax, you know, no tax. So it's a very, how to say, um, uh, beneficial uh, agreement. It's kind of like an agreement. You teach the society, you know, uh, what is the five precepts and all that good stuff so that they can all be at peace. Of course, there are many views on that. I'm not going to entertain that. Right now, I'm just going to say as, as it is. Five precepts and all that is, is to cultivate merits, right? doesn't matter what perspective we see. It stabilizes the society. So this is the merit of a monk if they're truly doing their job, which is what Master Ching Kong trying to do a role model on. If you're truly do it, doing your job as a monk, you're pacifying a whole society because everyone's at peace. They understand cause and effect, which is what we're trying to do here as well. Cause and effect. Uh, not just monk, lay, lay Buddhists as well has responsibility to help out. So we have this whole system already in place. And when they go to China, it, it, this is how it works. Emperor give a piece of land without tax. The monk needs to follow, obviously, the rules of the Buddha, basically all the precepts of the Buddha. But because of the localization, they need to add a little bit more. They need to customize, um, what I say, some of the regulation to the local standards without sacrificing the original teaching. So this becomes what, you know, I think the answer shared in Chinese, the Bai Zhang Qing Gui, you know, the um, precepts of, uh, not precepts, the discourse of precepts by, I don't want to translate it wrong. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a set of guidelines rather than precepts. Only Buddha can set precepts, no one else. Only people who attain enlightenment can set precepts, all right? But even they gain enlightenment, you need to be in a, appear as a Buddha to set the precepts. So there's only one Shaimuni Buddha, you know, historical time. No one else after him, not even, you know, the Bodhisattva can set the precepts because it will mess, it will commit this problem. Uh, not sabotage might, might cause confusion. People are like, oh, this might be a real enlightened beings, but how can I know not, they are not imposters, right? People might impose as enlightened being. And not everyone is wise. Some people just follow at face value. So even Bodhisattva has already, is a past Buddha. They appear as a Bodhisattva, appear as normal people. They reveal themselves as Bodhisattva at the end of their life. They will never say, oh yeah, I'm just going to set a new rule. No. They will like follow Shaimuni Buddha's rule. And guess what? Shaimuni Buddha's so-called rule is not set by himself. It's 
it's it's basically passed down for all, all the previous Buddha. So even Buddha himself do not create things out of nowhere. He just apply the medicine where it's, where it's needed. He didn't add things on it. Nothing added. It's exactly as it is. So what happens is when you go to different countries in China, because we have thousands of years of adaptations, so it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting example. In the um, Theravada tradition that went to the south, they have their own modification, but they are a bit more close to the Indian one because of the geographical. They are mostly the same, 30 degree temperate. But in China, in North, uh, in Vietnam, in, in uh, Japan, in Korea, it's different. So they modify in a lot in China and then they export to other countries. So what I'm trying to say is, in China, they have this system of, you know, tax-free system, right? Right now we have in the, in the West Minister or in the parliamentary system or in the constitutional system in the Western world, you know, even though we might be secular, we still have respect for religions. So we also give churches and stuff tax-free. Basically, that's the same system. Uh, that's what the emperor did in China. So they tax-free for the Buddhist monk or any missionaries of any religion. But Buddhism is the most successful model that adapted into China and become one of them. So what happened is when they import this system in there, they understand that the needs is different. Everyone, instead of going out, they use the land that granted by the emperor to a government, basically, uh, to self-sufficient so that they don't, they no longer have to worry about getting food from other people. They do practice this alms begging from time to time, but eventually it becomes more of a ceremony. Sometimes some part of the society still support it, some part, because China is a big place. They still have the society that support it, but most of the time, especially in metropolitan, Beijing, Chang'an, stuff like that, they usually have their own patch of land uh, and always remove from the cities. Right? So what I'm trying to say is they have this system, they change it, they make, make it work, because obviously they produce so many enlightened students. So this means that this is a successful model imported from India. So the Chinese uh, Buddhist system is a successful model proven by Liu Zhu Huineng. We have the Zen master, Master uh, Liu Zhu Huineng. We have Master Hui Yuan, which is the first Chinese Buddha, uh, Buddhism uh, uh, of Pure Land. Of course, it came from Shaimuni Buddha and it was passed through many Indian uh, enlightened monks. But when it passed to China, we know Huineng is the one that carries on the tradition. So all these things are real people, real history. You know, when you go to San Cecilia and we pray to the 12 teachers, patriarch of the um, Pure Land School, one by one, they're following the model, right? They didn't change a lot. They just changed just enough to fit in, just like Master Ching Kung trying to adapt technologies into our time. So he started with satellite TVs, started with the you know, inclusion of technologies in the teaching, where it was not common back then, maybe once in a while, televised uh, broadcast, he committed all the money that was donated to him into setting up a satellite. Later, with the advent of internet, World Wide Web, he's using this internet model. Right now, it becomes a norm, after, especially after COVID. Everyone sit in front of a camera like this and talk. It was um, not unheard of, it was very rare. All right. So right now, we can see how far he, he was, his thinking is. And not because he's trying to create something new, because he sees there is, a, there is a use of this technology. Although there's a lot of negative from technology, there's also positive from that. So systems like this, well, this is what I'm talking about. Those systems that accumulate from experience. You know, not just simply they want to put shackles on the masses so that they can control them. No. All right. It's 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 just to help people to have a sense of certainty, predictability, so they can live in peace. You may be an extraordinary individual. Doesn't mean every single person can be like that. But maybe there are one or two person that does not need to follow the rules because they might uh, be able to do that. But even if they are real meritorious person, even they are exceptional, they will also follow the rules. All right. Like even Buddha appears again in these ways. They will still follow the real human laws. They don't. They don't 
do anything that is against human societies, so uh, expectation. Exactly as it is. Obviously, there will be changes, but only for the better. That inspired by role model. This is how you do the proper change, not instigating riots and chaos all right, that will harm people's livelihood. However, there are always exceptions, like I say, right? And that exception has to be very extreme to the point where no one can eat, survive anymore. I'm pretty sure that more majority does not have to reach that level yet. We, we're not in that era yet. I'm pretty sure things might come and go. Sometimes some part of, some part of a society might have that, you know, some part of the world might have that situation where armed rebellion is the actual positive way to do it, right? So Buddhism is all about wisdom, applying the right thing at the right time. As long as this is not for selfish gains, and this is something that, you know, really, really necessary to help everyone to live a better life so they don't have to take up arms and fight against one another or having a very negative um, society, negative um, uh, negative environment. Like, you know, currently, even we don't have to... F- they have the threat of physical violence. We have to uh, psychology violence, like bullying, is another thing. But those mindset of you know bullying, of you know uh, shaming people uh, in a in a in an extreme way, in an unreasonable way. It's also very um, problematic. Those are more of a problem we need to solve uh, as a human. Uh, kind as a, as a society you know those things also you know um, instigating uncertainty you know mentally you, know, you might not uh, causing riots and stuff in the real sense but you're causing a lot of uncertainty a lot of uh, losing of understanding and standard right? is it better or worse I'm not going to say here because what's the point right? it's going to cause more argument what I'm trying to say is Right now, we're in a way we we're in a society where everything is so um, polar, polarized in a sense. Or sometimes we might over polarize it. We might over emphasize on the difference. We forgot, you know, the basics. You know, basics of human society. We need to work together, cooperate, collaborate. Um, you know, actually care for each other, no matter what kind of sides, what kind of identity I identify as, whether you agree or not agree. Humans are humans. And if you have to deal with this uh, society issue, even though they might not agree with you, you still need to respect the difference in your opinion and not um, causing harm to another person. Just because your ideology is one side does not mean it gives you the right to harm other person. All right. So, so those, those mental chaos, you know, this chaos caused in, in the mental confusion or in the confusion of a society order is quite serious nowadays. And and um, doesn't matter what kind of camps we identify ourselves as. We also need to remember, in the end of the day, we are all living in the same piece of land, right? They all need two alternatives. Either you're doing the same old thing in the World War II stuff, where one camp exterminate another camp in the utmost brutality, which we never want to see again. Those people who promote this kind of thing have never seen the pictures of Hiroshima, have never seen the pictures of maybe Battle of Stalingrad, have never seen the pictures of Holocaust. They should have a look. Right? We do not want to repeat this crap again. And now we have nuclear as well which is what uh, Master Chingo mentioned. Nowadays, you can't afford these kind of conflicts. So we don't want that kind of... This is one pathway, ultimate destruction. The other pathway is, despite all these disagreements, you know, your new identity, doesn't matter what you identify as, you need to understand human beings are living in the same place, the same piece of the world. Live and let live. Understand, compassionate, never change. Doesn't matter who you are. Compassion is always there. Doesn't matter you agree or disagree. You always need to have compassion, care for one another. You know, promote 
good work in workplace, you know, promote society, peaceful society. And the rest, we can talk about it later. That's the compromise we have to make. Um, because in the end of the day, we all will pass away. But what we want to leave behind for other people, the people next generation, we need to think properly. This is why systems are there. Because we want to make sure the next generation does not have to suffer the same thing they have. Maybe World War II generation didn't want the next generation to continue another war. Right? So they have this UN, you know, the red line, hotline, president talking to each other. So now we are more and more, how to say, opened in a sense. We also need to remember our roots, understand what makes us people, what makes us human, and what makes us, um, how to say, having this peace, this tenuous peace for a long time. But we need to be aware of the institution, but we need to also respect it. Custom is entirely, you know, depending on the group. You know, if, if the custom of these people, especially like we call it about ch traditional Chinese culture, is custom. This custom, all right, has form and spirit in the sense of, you know, um, values, moralities, those things that tested thousands of times, thousands of years. Right, it has its value. Doesn't matter what your identity is, your mentality is, or nationality is. You know, the more diverse, the better. It will test how real this thing is. So now we're so diverse in so many spectrum. This traditional Chinese culture is even more important. Right, not because it's Chinese or traditional. It's because what makes them Chinese Chinese, or what makes them traditional, why what makes them worthy to be revered more nowadays is it's, it's the stability and the ability to bring a peace of mind you can wrap it up in other ways you know you, you there are different packaging you can put some people might not be able to accept that maybe they might think it's too nationalistic stuff but it's all about love and respect your parents taking care of one another your brothers your sisters brotherhoods those are universal stuff values but they are neglected they are not practiced you can talk about this and everyone's like yeah yeah that's common sense yeah but how many people practice it look at the look at the family look at how many unstable family nowadays this is not practicing the love and respect towards parent uh, towards the elders and the elders not practicing love and respect towards their own youngest the caring duty of care for the youngest those basics are not taken care of doesn't matter what you identify as or maybe it might cause this confusion to happen in the very first place. So it's not the fault of people who want this kind of um, spe uh, 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 special circumstances. It's because of the lacking and neglect of the people of the past generation. Because they're too, too concentrated on money, concentrated on wealth, profit. They forgot about the value of family. And in the end of the day, they're going to live you know, miserably by themselves or with their spouse. Spouse pass away, they're only, they're only by themselves. I'm talking about one very specific scenario. I'm not saying that it applies to everyone. So these are very complex stuff. And to wrap it up, we still need to go back to the core of what makes human human. Human are formed by you know, a family. We have parents we need to have parents in order to be a human so this unit has to be correct doesn't matter what you identify as someone has to play a mom someone has to play a dad and and, and the children all right i'm just gonna put it out there i'm not gonna say you have to be this and that but someone has to play these two roles and someone has to play the children not play the children obviously that's how human become right you start from children childhood so those things are core. I don't care what culture, political alignment, or, or sexual orientation, anything. These are core of human species. And we're talking just purely from human perspective. This needs to be right. If this is not properly man managed, doesn't matter how fancy your outside is, which is technology, the 
you know, the boom, the economy, the political philosophy, the whatever theories, etc., et uh, technological advancement, fly to the moon, <clears throat> you lost that sense of humanity, then you lost everything. That's the root. Filial piety, you know, love and respect to your elders. And then the parents, elders have respect, duty of care to the children. Those are the, those are the foundation of a system. All right? All right. Otherwise, legal system is useless. It's just a piece of paper. You know, no one follows what makes the law law. Law is useless if no one is used, if no one's following. You say, oh, do not steal. All right, put the, a, a bunch of um, those. Um, you want to see how advanced or how civilized society is? You judge by how many people taken the thing without actually meant for them. Say, you know, like freebies for the homeless people, you know, free water, free buns, and then only for people with uh, financial troubles or homeless people, or disadvantaged people. Just put it out there on the store, sit there and, and, and observe. How many people actually has that problem? How many people doesn't? All right. And if, if there's a lot of people who just want to take advantage of free buns that they can easily afford, then you can understand this society is lacking uh, in empathy, in humanity, teaching. Not saying that they are not human, no, not, not scolding them, but they're lacking that sense of shame, sense of decency. Right? This has nothing to do with whatever alignment or political stuff you, you with. It's just human decency. That's the basic foundation. You can talk about all this big stuff later. Those, those things matters but they are not as matter as this one this one is not right nothing you do is right because everything else the rule you set the the sort of um you know the big vision you put in it can't work you can't they are not cooperating they don't know what why do they follow you they can do better than you they, they can they think they can do better than you they might be able to do better than you so you need something to 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 make sure everyone um how to say understands gets the point right so why is this important because this is actually for the benefit of everyone and why is it really benefiting everyone you need to show it you need to prove it right not just talk about it there's no longer the era of you just stand there and talk fancy words and rally up and hire people it's not over there's still potential genius doing that but we are more wary now like yeah, we're not gonna sit there and just you know ooh yeah with someone else we're gonna observe if this person can actually perform all right so so yeah buddhism as well if no one's following the precepts if no one has that sense of wanting to um understand the buddha's teaching and actually want to you know propagate buddhism actually want to help people understanding um what makes them unhappy what makes them happy and how long is the happiness lasting? What is the real happiness? What's not the real happiness? Basically benefiting people in the, in the real sense of the word, not just sensually pleasures. Uh, if, if someone has that heart, you know, they will start to understand the importance of self-discipline, -rest this restraint, um, stuff like that. The Master Ching can talk about Master Lee, Mr. Lee, his own teacher, very... Uh, he always cite, his teacher always cite, Master Ching Kong's teacher cite that he, he really want to pass down his knowledge, his path to other people. He, he want to point a way for one of the students that can inherit his wishes, inherit his visions. But no one could. No one, no one willing to sit down and actually learn. Right? No one willing to actually follow his teaching. So if you can't even, how to say, abide by uh, your teacher's um, instruction, like doctor's prescription, how can you get better, right? How can you improve yourself? Because the reason he's a teacher because he can see ahead of you, in a sense, or you identify yourself with this teacher. You're able to find yourself living better and clearer after the guidance of this teacher, even though the teacher is doing the same thing for everyone, but you, it just kicks with you. So you're willing to listen to his instructions because you trust him. It's all about trust relationships as well. Understand this person is for the best. 
they do not have any harm towards you. They really, really care about you. They really want you to be the best. So, so sometimes it might be harsh, sometimes it might be irris- irrational in, in the glance, but you understand this person, this teacher of yours, is, it's, a, it's, a, it's really, really want the best for you. And, and you know, everything they do has a proper reason in the end. You might not see it now. So unless, once you have that level of trust and you know, in contact, that's why Master Qing Kong follow his teacher for 10 years. He's not just blind, blindly follow. He, he observed, he, he was recommended to him and then he observed and then he realizes the real deal and then he follows. And he obviously being humble and also say that I didn't follow fully as well. I'm only taking like 30%. 30% of the, uh, I only have that 30% of sincerity. 30% of sincerity compared to my previous generation has 60%, 70%. And then after him, it's only 10%. And then forward is 1%, 2%. That means they no longer want to listen. All right. And because why would I listen to you? I'm better than you. Why, why would people think like that? Because they haven't actually seen the point of doing it. They only see it in the surface. If they understand the depths of his vow, his teacher's vow, or Master Ching Kong's vow, the depths of his com- conviction to actually genuinely, you know, helping sentient beings to escape from these six realms. Obviously, he himself go to Pure Land and also helping other people, you know, really find their path in footing in life, no longer drifting from one problem to another, one sensory to another sensory pleasures. No longer drifting from one reborn to another reborn. When they understand the depth of conviction, they will start to evaluate themselves and say, oh no. But how many people can do that? How many people can get to that level? How many people are willing to reflect on themselves on this? How many people instead drown in this, you know, colorful, vibrant, looks peaceful, but not really peaceful kind of world? Something that we need to think about as well. Back to this one, to summarize it, because I'm going a bit of overtime. All right, people with um, this starts from f- sense of fear, fear of consequences. Like understanding consequences comes to us no matter what. We no longer dare to do things so carelessly. Obviously, we can relax a bit. We do not don't have to be all tensed up and all that. That's only the very pre- very starting point. Obviously, you need to see the point of having this rules and regulations, understanding, you know, when to relax, when not to relax, you know, when to achieve the right effect of winning hearts rather than just instilling fear in people. You actually convince them that they want to protect the rule with you together. That's that's the that's the, that's the wisest way of doing it. Everyone protects the rule, not just the police, not just the judge, but everyday people, even beggars, even homeless people, they want to protect this rule and order because this is the best outcome for them in the sense of macroscopic. Everyone is still able to live by with this compared to, say, you know, only benefiting the nobles and aristocrats that was in the past, only the emperors, right? Now it's equally benefiting everyone, right? Pure, uh, and Buddhist precepts, there's no reason not to protect it. It's protecting your human life as in a real sense, like you're able to reborn at least as a human. Protecting the Buddhist rule in a sense of self-discipline, five precepts, is to protect yourself from falling further. There's no, it does not benefit Buddha anyway. Buddha already enlightened. He does not need anything from you. So why not? The whole point of them is 100% selflessness. That's why they're called Buddha. They are not normal human beings because we still have a lot of selfishness. They don't have selfishness. Right? So why do they tell you about the hell? Why do they? To scare you for the sake of it? Like a horror movie? To gain blockbusters? No. Because they know if they don't show the consequences like Bodhisattva Siddhikapa, we can't have that level of awareness we can't. It's beyond our faculties. We can't see it. Only few people can see it. 
one or two people in every one million, two million people have yin yang yin. Even they see it, they don't understand it. So they, they get someone to guide you to understand like this is how it works. This is not artificial anymore. This is because of the wandering thoughts. It becomes six realms and six hell, hungry ghost, human, hell, hungry ghost, uh, animal, human. Those are state of mind. If you can't accept it, at least accept it as a state of mind. And that state of mind is enough to torture you as well. Look at those people in mental institutions. Look at those people tortured by depressions. Then It's painful if you're not there. If you're not experiencing it, you never know. You experience it, you understand. It's like living hell. Anyone with sense of compassion will want to relieve them of that. So we have all these are you okay movements trying to make sure everyone's all right. There are moments you also feel crap as well. You feel like everything is so heavy. That's when your karmic obstacles coming out as well. And because you did something in the past, obviously you have to receive the effect. Sometimes no people give it to you. You're thinking like that. Your whole thinking is very negative. This is, a, this is also a sort of hell, a sort of hungry ghost. Hungry ghost means endless craving. You know, you crave for one bag of chips. Now you want to eat three bags of chips. Speaking from experience, you craving for, you know, you finish, you just finished dinner, you're craving more, you know, more, more burgers, more stuff. Speaking from experience. So it's not, it won't stop. And then, and, and then next day morning, your whole stomach is hurting. Those are very trivial example. But what about other stuff? Relationships, money, investment, all this, you know, excitement and also worries of losing the money or losing the relationships. Those things happen as well. We call it normal. But when you look from a perspective of an enlightened one, they were like, yeah. They call it normal because they drench. Like it's, it's like a person drenched in the rubbish, garbage bin and they smell or maybe, no, no, that's too much. When a person is in the fish market, when they started from normal cities into a fish market, they smell fish and they feel disgusted every day. But when you work in a fish market or golden fish market every single day as a routine, fish suddenly doesn't smell like fish anymore. It doesn't make you less stinky. It's just you're used to the stinkiness. See, there's a level of awareness needed. So that's why that's why we need to get, get to that starting point as well. Like, you know, we need to have that. It's called wisdom. Be able to see things, you know, outside your own experience which is very short I'm not saying that you should discredit it you should always have an agency of your own do not lose that otherwise it becomes a cult it's how cult do it they will always tell you the woom, 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 and then you become mindless zombies no this is not what buddha is trying to say buddha wants you to be fully enlightened means a full agency no longer uh, full become ignorant of the karma, fully aware of the karmic law. You understand full karmic law? What does it mean? When you look at unwholesome things, like, you know, lust and thought, you understand it as this is a pit of fire instead of this is a scene of pleasure. I avoid it like plague because I will fall into trap. All right? It's like for the junkies, drug tastes like heaven. Or people understand how terrible drug is. They look at it and they, they understand this is poisoned. It's going to destroy my life. It's going to destroy my family. It's going to destroy my relationship. It's going to destroy my temple. It's going to destroy every single thing. So what, what would you do? You stay the heck away from that thing. That's how Bodhisattva do it. When Bodhisattva look at this lust, you know, especially the hardest thing we can get rid of is lust uh, in, 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 in human world. They look at them as a pit of fire, literally, a pit of fire. Like you commit that deed, misconduct, sexual misconduct, you fell in the pit of hell. We still can't see it, hence we still still have that thoughts and actions. We thought it's awesome, it's amazing, right? But eventually you will need to suffer the consequences if the misconduct is too much, even among husband and wife as well. If you overdo it, first you harm your body, you also will be considered as trespassing as well. And no one is controlling you. It's the effect of cause and effect. So going back to the point here is able to, you know, understand fully 
enlightened, you have gaining full control over your faculties. You no longer feel helpless, bound by stuff. You're free. You're free to perform in any role, good and bad as well. But you're no longer bound by, um, because you're not ignorant, not saying that you're not subject to law of karma, you're no longer ignorant of karma. Obviously, you won't do something that incur the negative karma. Or when you do something, you don't think. There's very deep understanding that. That's why we need to have a sense of reverence and awe, not because we blindly follow worshipping Buddha, because he can see more than us. See, this is different between cult, all right, a blind cult, and then person with true devotion and understanding. It's because they understand this person knows more than me, and this person has way more experience than I am right now. I need to, I trust this person, I trust his character, so I read the Buddha story, I understand that. And then his many students has gained enlightenment. That's proof. It's a very rational process. And then you put your whole heart into it because you already filter it properly. That's why even in Buddhism, there are so many people acting like Buddhism, but they are actually not because they don't get the point. They might scrap the surface, might scrap the, you know, the, the, if you're lucky, the, the one they encounter is you follow the five precepts, the good one. So at least you get to be human and heaven, but you still can't get out of six rims, which missed the point. All right? It's like coming to New York City, but you actually didn't go to the New York City. You didn't go to the Madison Square Garden. You actually went outside Brooklyn or something or, or, or the outskirts. You only see the outside. You're like, oh yeah, I'm in New York City, but you actually are uh, you know, standing across Niagara Falls, and it's like, yeah, I can see New York City, but I'm still in Canada. Something like that, all right? It's, it's, it's not scratching the itch. Okay, if you're lucky, those are, those are still proper imitation. The imitation that worse is they actually go against. They twist the words. They appear as good. And then when you go too deep, you got sucked in. I'm not going to name names. I'm thinking pretty much... Uh, People will have an idea what that is, not, not just one particular organization throughout the histories. Anyway, back to this point, system or not system, those things are built on the benefits of most people. And Buddhism itself, as a, as a system, as a human institution as well, supposed to do that. And if it fails to do that, either it's because of the people that operates in it did not do their job, or they're not aware of what they're just supposed to be. That means the negligence of the past generation has started. They didn't teach properly, instruct the next generation. So they went back to the default setting, which is take, uh, fighting over wealth of the temple. So instead of family fighting over the, the family trust or family property, the monks fighting over the temple property. So what's the difference? That's, that's, that's why Master Ching Kong and Master Ying Guang first, he's pioneering. In a sense, he saw this problem. He's like, nope, we're not going to do all this um, ceremony for sale kind of thing. You know, because those systems are supposed to be free, first thing. Second thing is supposed to be servicing mass group of devotees, people. You know, they come to the temple, they whatever they want to donate, and then they understand the Buddhism using the ceremony. Because when you look at San Sinian, it's all about Dharma talking. It's Dharma talk. Everything you sing is Dharma talk. All right? Jai Hai Shi Kong Chi So Po Liu Lang Liu Sorry. Anyway, Lo Ren Teng Pi An Everything is Dharma. The thing is, because it's designed in ancient China, obviously they're going to use Chinese. Obviously they're going to use, it's considered simplified Chinese already. Buddhist Chinese the scripture that we use, Hard Sutra and all that, they are simplified. Classical Chinese. All right? Just one more step before they fully simplify like modern Chinese. They are already very simple classical Chinese. Once you understand basics of Chinese structures and stuff, you can understand the words. It's If you compare to actual Confucian classic and all that, the, the, the language difficulties, these are for, meant for mass distribution. So system put in place because of that. All right, so now we're back to here. We have a person who pioneered this. In a sense, they want to go back to the origin of Buddhism, trying to under. Well, I'm talking about system, right? It's going back to the roots, you know, at its education, 
um, giving this, you know, sharing, you know, the talks and stuff, trying to understand why before you do it so that you don't blindly practice Mang Xiu Xia Lian and causing if harmless is the best scenario, if harmful, that's the worst scenario. Harmful as in your action and deeds are making people doubting about Buddhist teaching. So we're talking about Buddhism right now, right? Society as well, right? If the actions of the law, prof, law professions, doctors, those people are supposed to be upholding oath, Hippocratic oath for doctors. That means they must save the patient no matter what. Those are honorable stuff. You know, those are basis of trust of a society. Financial institutions are supposed to safeguard properly, not chasing profit without using their brain, which is what happened in financial crisis, 2008. You loan the money over the money over, you loan the money, you loan the loan to another company. The loan of a loan of a loan of a loan. You loan, you loan $1 million to someone who can only afford 80K. What, what do you expect? Some, something like that, just to get the, anyway, back to the point, right? Uh, just, you know, be a good role model, right? If the lawyer and police officer are brutal, using the authority to uh, cause fear into the daily civilians, rather than protect and serve, how can they have this have desire to protect this institution? How can they respect your profession? Even those are few rotten apples. If these rotten apples are not properly dealt with, how can you have the insp uh, confidence and how can you inspire confidence in the public? Same goes for Buddhism. If there's no right example, and this example cannot be done in one time, it has to stand decades, decades of time to prove it. How can people be confident in this teaching anymore? Because it has fallen to a level where everyone thought Buddhism is superstition, is polytheism. You pray into many gods. Uh, th those bodhisattva are many gods. It's like a Roman pantheons. It has fallen to that level. Even there are Buddhist people, so, uh, especially common one, they thought, you know, I just went in and prayed for fortune and lux. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, this is not the point. And if there's no one championing properly example, uh, showing that why Buddhism deserves to exist, because it's a very important element of a society to pacify the, not pacify, to give a path, a, 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 a not alternative, a enhancing our way of life. You know, you continue your daily livelihood, obviously, hopefully it's a good one, uh, the productive and positive one, and then it improves on top of it. All right? It gives you a, a bigger goal, bigger options, without sacrificing your proper you know, day-to-day -day foundations, you know, as a human being, as a son, as a as a colleague, as a boss, as a subordinate. You need to do this job, but you don't need to stuck in this rat race. You know, you can divert all your energy, your vow and devotion into pure land or into enlightenment and our method of getting enlightenment because enlightenment means no more ignorance, full freedom, full agency over our action, thoughts and speech. That means conscious, subconscious, you're fully aware. You're no longer subject to some random thoughts coming out or random temptation. You already passed the test or you have help passing the test. So those are values of Buddhism. They will prevent you from falling into lower tree realms. That's the most basics. Improve your current human life. You know, you continue to cultivate merits. If you don't want to go to Pure Land or gain enlightenment, same thing, you still will be a better human next life if you're earnestly practicing it. You'll be a better human, better conditions, better wealth. You're born to a better place. Even this life, you can improve like Leo Fan, like Yu Jing Yi Gong. Those, guess who they met? Some monks. And those proper practicing monks. So how important are they? Why do they deserve to have all these merits even though they don't produce anything? Because they do produce something. They produce merits. They don't just produce merits, they allow you to gain merits. They allow you to cultivate, contribute to merits. However, the key point is the monk has to work triple harder, harder than everyone else in order to have the uh, meritorious ability. Fu Tian. Even being a monk, just an image that reminds you ever of Buddhism, Buddha, 
it's already a meritorious thing. No matter what, if that person is following the precept, obviously 100% better. But if they're not following precept, even the image itself is also a meritorious deed. However, of course, the penalty is even harder because it's like police officer breaking the law. Obviously, he's going to get triple the punishment. No excuse there. You read the law inside out. Lawyer breaking the law. Judge breaking the law. President breaking the oath of their office. Those are big, serious stuff. Same goes for Buddha, Buddhism. If you break the, uh, the precepts, you will get even serious punishment. It's just that worldly punishment is not going to come down. It will be, we call it divine punishment maybe, but karmic punishment. That's the right word. Right? System has to work like that. You know, examples. People championing it needs to show example. All right? Only then it will inspire confidence, inspire people to stand together, to better the system. It has to be open enough to accept input. It also has to be avoiding um, extremes. It has to, how to say, avoid the extremes from pulling it apart. If you cannot withstand that, you can no longer be a system that provides peace and stability. So people who sabotage that maliciously is arrogant. And why they're arrogant? They are not aware of the importance, you know, how they can do that, you know. They live in peace because of that. And if you do support the system without uh, maliciously, instead of actually reflecting on the weakness of the system, trying to reform it, that's an entirely different thing, right? If it's like a very tyrannical society and people are just over the top controlling and stuff, that's another thing. But if it's just a normal system and people are just trying to, you know, rig it, you know, commit frauds and stuff like that, or, you know, causing riots, you know, for uh, for a very extreme reason, far, 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 whatever, far up, far down, far left, far right, whatever, the very extreme kind of mindset that's supportaging it. Because you're actually harming a lot of people. Yeah. All right, so the whole point is just cultivate a very um, pure mind, understand karma, understand the grow the wisdom, you know, understand the teachings, um, observe, learn, uh, you know, understand this has scales, it does not just happen, you know, the satisfaction and all that has to be done in a proper way. So understand the nuances as well, like this is not a simple one, uh, straightforward thing, it's complicated in a way, rightfully so. Uh, because our mind is so complicated and everyone has so much uh, thinking, different ways of thinking. Obviously, it's going to be complicated. And real life situation is not always clean. But the core does not change. Uh, the, the whole point is it's you do not forget the root of things. No matter how complicated it is, it still needs to have a root. You know, one there's only one spot for the root. They can branch into many tree leaves. So you need to find a root understand cause and effect is the core you know it's the is the operating principle and then focus on the positive side you know the the side that inspire humanity's brightest part you know compassion love care right no matter what system it is if we can instill this kind of spirit into their system introduce them softly gently right after the violence and everything is peace Pacified. It has to operate in that principle. This harm, you know, always instill respect and um, compassion. Always instill some sort of self-discipline. You know, curb the power, hunger, curb the curb the lavish lifestyle, and just be more how to say, willing to share the wealth, right? To people outside your core profits, you're always willing to share more. Be a role model, an example, organically. Everyone will try to follow that. That's the right way to coexist with a system. Uh, I'm going to leave it for next. Like I say, this is very long. I'm already going over. Um, we'll leave it for next week. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, hopefully, there are some good points on pointed out in, in, in this one. Uh, if you have any questions, if you don't mind, you can. I don't mind. Uh, you can raise it out right now, or any thoughts after 
this one hour and a half talk. Uh, feel free to share, speak your mind right now. You can unmute and just say, yeah. It's three minutes for us. <laughs> System. Also think about like how how we get to here. There's so many people going through innovations and you know, contributions to the, the patent free in, inventions and and people you know going through the sufferings. Like regulations are written in blood. Have you heard that? Rules are written in blood. Like why is traffic restricting the speed because people die of high speed? Why is traffic uh, stopping you from drinking when driving? Because people die because they drunk driving. Regulations are written in blood. Those are very common phrase of saying it. Those are those are not there for the fun of it. But if it's for the fun of it, people will rebel and rise up and then overthrow it. The reason is still there and being practiced. Some of them obviously can be obsolete, but some of them can be, let's say, important. And people are smart enough to understand that, All right? And you just do it senselessly, just just for the sake of you know ego or whatever, uh, some sort of um, Unrealistic and un, 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 unrealistic ideals, utopian thinking is not. Uh, it's not responsible. It's it's evil in that sense. You're harming a lot of people. All right, harming sensibility. Okay, so we'll leave it here. Uh, so any questions uh, following, you can just drop a message to me, or uh, and we'll talk about it in the next session. So let's chant ten times Amitabha and finish this. A session. A mi to for. 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 A mi to for A mi to for Dedication of Merits May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo.